My name is Ryan Halpin. I am building an off-grid sustainable home. It's called The Bachelor Ship, and I plan to do it for under $6,000. Originally, I found this many years ago when I was working at my dad's tire shop back in Wisconsin. It was when green buzzwords were all out, solar, sustainability, self-sustaining. I was searching that and Earthships kept popping up. I was like, holy cow, this is everything I've been looking for. I just finally found it. Years later, I went to a seminar in Denver that Mike Reynolds put on, ended up helping with the slideshow. He bought me dinner, margaritas, gave me a book and a t-shirt, and I was hooked. I was like, all right, I'm coming to Taos. I'm gonna be hard to get rid of. Three years later, here in Taos, New Mexico, I have purchased land and started building my own place. I moved out here mid-June of this last summer, started tire work as far as laying it out and pounding the tires for the dirt. I was two weeks away from getting the roof on this October and I had a backhoe driver incident, so I'll just leave it at that. So at any rate, we took 60 tires down and now I have to repack 60 to 70 tires and get to the point where I can put the roof on. It should have been by Thanksgiving, but I hope to be in by early June as far as enclosed, basically camping with a roof. This is going to be the inside of my Earthship inspired bachelor ship. We got the tires that are packed full of dirt, packed to a point where they're about 90% compacted, so they're pretty stiff. Each one weighs about 300 pounds when you get done pounding them. So with that amount of weight coming down on them, it's important to have them staggered so they lock into each other and give you that structural integrity and support that the walls should give you. I got the tires from right in town here. There's two tire shops that were more than happy to let me take them. I worked it out with them like, hey guys, I will stack up. I will make, this will be a prettier pile than it was when I got here. And sure enough, it was. And they, every time I came, they, they were pretty happy to see me. Once we get the tires packed out, we then get into it with a, an adobe mixture. This is just to save money. A lot of places you'd use concrete, but I don't feel like concrete is necessary out here. I have all this adobe dirt at my disposal. So haul out a pile of sand, get some straw, cut that up, water, adobe and just start throwing fastballs into the tire work. Once you do that, you can also put rocks in, and that way you're not using near as much adobe mix. And then I'll keep going with that adobe work until it's flush with the tires, and then at that point, I can start plastering it over. That's gonna cover up the tires, alleviate any concern of off-gassing from the tires. So here we have the cooling tube, which is a 10 inch culvert pipe, 20 feet long. What that pipe is gonna do is bring in cool air in the summertime. So I'll have the front face, which faces south. It's gonna have a door and a bunch of windows. Above that door is gonna be an operable window. The heat is gonna go up and out that window, and it's gonna draw cool air in from the cooling tube here. Basically, convection and science are gonna work as my air conditioner. I'm not gonna have a mechanical forced air system. I'm just gonna let science do do science and cool my space down. And then have a lofted bed above the cooling tube and my closet underneath the bed. And then I'll open up all this space in front of it for table and chairs, sofa, a small kitchen area. I'll be using either a rocket stove, if I can figure out how to do that in here, or the isopropyl alcohol stoves. You know, a jug of water hanging, gravity fed, so I don't have to have pumps for that. You know, really simple systems to get me through, get me enclosed, basically camping with a roof until I upgrade my systems. I have the living space here, which is 16 feet deep, 13 feet wide. Not much space in there for growing, so that's why from this wall, I'm gonna go about 10 to 12 feet wide, and that's where I'm gonna put my aquaponics system, grow all my food, whether it's in the gray water planter cell, which is water that will be coming from the sink into the gray water to feed and water the plants, and then someday move that to my toilet to flush the toilet using gray water multiple times before I finally expel it to the outdoor landscaping. So with this big greenhouse, it's also going to increase the performance of the bedroom area because that greenhouse acts as a buffer. Winter time when the sun is low and shining right in, it's going to increase the heating and comfort level of both spaces, the greenhouse and my living space and then in the summertime when the sun is directly above us for the most part that's also going to help with the convection of that cooling tube so the way the homes are set up facing south you're able to take advantage of the low winter sun and the high summer sun for both heating and cooling and it's just passive 
So this is the back berm of the house. The berm is basically a big source of insulation. As the temperature drops on the outside, the thermal mass is gonna slowly just radiate out, keeping that internal space around anywhere from 60 to 70 degrees, along with in the summertime with the cooling tube that travels through the berm. It's tapping into that cool earth temperature and in turn, give me my air conditioning. One of the more important, or the most important system, I believe, especially here in the high desert mesa, is the, the water catchment and filtration system. With our annual precipitation around seven inches a year, if we're lucky, I'm gonna wanna catch as much water as I can, diverting it to the cistern, but having the cistern high enough to where the water is gravity fed. I'm looking forward to doing an outlaw septic. And by outlaw, it's something that uh, the Earthships have used in foreign countries, where you don't have access to a conventional septic system. You basically dig a hole, you put some semi-tires in there, you put some rocks on the side of it, pour a, a cement dome over top of it with a hole that you could put the toilet on, and it has an overflow. So as you're filling the system, it overflows with your affluent water out into the outdoor landscaping. In this environment, you're gonna be able to grow trees, native shrubs, bushes, pollinating flowers, so flowers for the bees and butterflies and the things that you wouldn't expect out here in the high desert mesa. I want to be able to show people that it is possible on a low budget to take control of your life. You know, I was on the grid, living in an apartment, working 40, 50 hours a week, short haircut, shaved face, tie, and it wasn't for me. Moved out here, started doing this, I was like, okay, I can be my own boss. I can set myself free as far as my living arrangements and do it in a way that's gonna actually benefit the environment. You know, humans in general are bad for the planet. You know, just our daily life in a normal city or town, it's just all around destructive. This is a way to where you can live, but still give back to the environment and take care of it, allowing it to take care of you as well. The message I'd like to get out there is just, no matter what situation you're in right now, whether you're already working towards this type of lifestyle or are just viewing this video for the first time. It's possible to get to this point, but it's baby steps. Like I said, I was clean shaven, working in a corporate office, and I just slowly started to reduce my amount of plastic. Like I would, I would only allow myself five items that had plastic every time I went to the grocery store. So that would drastically start reducing my waste, but it also you know, made my diet better because I was getting fresher fruits and vegetables instead of the plastic wrap stuff. Little steps like that. Or if you live in an apartment complex, see if they can start a compost pile for everybody to use and then you use that to grow tomatoes starting locally and just working on yourself a little bit at a time it's just like working out you know you start with two or three push-ups and you're doing five push-ups a day and then you're doing 15 20 and next thing you know you're pounding tires building your own self-sustainable home any baby step you can make they just start snowballing and you can make a difference so just be the change do what you want to see in the world If you enjoyed that video hit the like button if you're new here subscribe to the channel for more videos similar to this content right now I'm in Joshua Tree California if any of you guys are out here in Joshua Tree tweet at me at Dylan McGaster and let's go on a hike